I was thinking, can a person invest in a CNC, put it in a garage workshop and start generating a profit, make it pay for itself, and then also start making money? Profit, 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 let's find out. My theory is you can actually take a CNC, put it in your workshop, let it work, program whatever project you want, put that thing on there and let it start cutting while you're working on other projects. Then you've got two employees, yourself and the CNC. So now I'm just gonna start unboxing things and try to figure out how this thing goes together. And then I'll let you know if it was hard or not. A lot of boxes, that's for sure. As soon as I opened it up, I can see that they've got them labeled in steps. Step five, step six. I like that they got everything labeled in steps. I need to find the instruction manual. I know I'm not supposed to read the instruction manual. I'm a guy, but I don't want to screw this up. So I got it together, got it square, and this was on backwards. Just so you know, these little black things that stick out face to the front. I didn't pay attention to the instructions. So it took me a, right at five hours to assemble everything. It's fairly straightforward. I'll drop a link in the description to the video that they put out how to assemble it. I have a Shapeco that has the homing problem or an X limit switch problem. Please tell me what, how to fix that. I'm a dummy. I had the X motor and the Z motor wires crossed. It's working. A uh, big dummy. And to tell you how big of a dummy I am, that only took about, I don't know, two and a half hours to find that two wires were crossed, clearly labeled. Jeez, come on, man. So we're gonna try to cut our first piece. We're gonna make a sign out of quarter inch plywood. I have no idea if I have this set up right or not. This could be an epic failure. I've downloaded this file off of Etsy because I haven't learned to design the files yet. We're gonna give this a shot and see what happens. Ooh, fancy. And then once it you initialize it, it moves to here, and then you load your file up. I'm a little nervous. I don't want to break that bit because those things ain't cheap. They're they're actually really expensive. All right, so I loaded the file and we'll fix and see what happens. Let's do this. What is it doing? I think I messed up. Attempt number one was a fail. I didn't break nothing, so that's good. The spindle's way up here. It should have been down here cutting. I've already broke this apart because I threw it over there in the scrap pile. What happened was the cutout got was loose in there, loose and wiggly. And then it gets all wampy jaw when the thing tries to start cutting stuff and then it just, you know, I sound like Biden here. When the CNC cuts the whole shape out before it cuts out the centers, you know what happens. It's just moving around in there and it can't cut correctly. So and I have no idea what I'm looking at yet. So I didn't know that should have left tabs on there that didn't cut all this all the way out. So now we're gonna go find a different file and try that. There you go. I got a piece of canary wood. Got some two-sided tape down. So we're just gonna make a tray. I'm gonna try to. Yes, yes, check it out. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh. Yeah, I, <laughs> this is a, it's a really cool tool to have, but it actually worked like it's supposed to and left those tabs in there instead of like the, the sign that didn't leave the tabs. So I'm just gonna trim these out and then I'm gonna take a round over bit and round this over. Well, a chamfer bit I think will look better. We're gonna chamfer these things, put some, uh, sand it a little bit, put some Odie's on there. Catch y'all tree. Gosh, awesome.
Look at that. First CNC project successful. Well, it was the third attempt. The third attempt was successful. The sign, just the file wasn't right. I didn't know that until it was already cut because I didn't know what to look for. However, this tray, I'll drop a link in the description below to this file if you got a, a Shapeco, you want to do this carbide create one. Super easy. All I did, the only thing I did extra was I put a little chamfer around the edges like you see here, and it just kind of popped that detail out. This is a piece of canary. Man, it's beautiful. Check that out. I mean, look at the wood grain. That's that Odie's oil making everything pow, pop. I like this. I like this a lot. So my hypothesis is, that's a big old word for a country boy. My hypothesis is I can take this machine and show you that a $2,500 investment can actually pay off and you can pay for this, this machine will pay for itself. That's my thought. I'm gonna try to prove that with this video series. You wanna go along with that, hit that subscribe button so that you can follow along and find out if this is actually gonna work. What? <laughs> How you doing? Man, I, I was so happy when that first project actually come out right. That's the first, actually the third attempt. But who's counting? So it was awesome to get that out. And then I was able to take a piece of leopard wood, Miss 731 one, the round soap dish to put her so her dish soap, hand soap, and clean her in right by the sink. I was able to cut that out very easily. Just told it what size circle I wanted and then how deep to cut out the material. A couple of days after that, I was able to make this mallet using a Spartan file that somebody sent me and then I cut it out of spalted tamarind. Again, this is from Working the Grain Hardwoods. So I actually gave this mallet to Mr. Mark Puente who owns Working the Grain Hardwoods. Please check him out, wtghardwoods.com and let him know that you saw the mallet and you liked it or you didn't like it. I hope you liked it. I thought it was a really cool looking mallet. You know I love those mallets. I already have one video right there on how to make mallets. This one was made with a CNC, but I used the same assembly process as I did in that video. You know what time it is, power tip time. The power tip is, if you get a CNC, you better clamp your stuff down or get some good double-sided tape because if that stuff comes unglued or unstuck, disaster. I broke a $30 bit because it was it was clamped down, but it come unclamped because I didn't have it tight enough and I wasn't using double-sided tape. And now things are going right. Be sure to clamp that piece down if you're just starting out. Clamping the piece down is extremely important. That's the power tip. Make sure it don't move because if it moves, it's messing everything up. I do want you to know that Carbide 3D sent me this machine. I'm not making affiliate money. They're not paying me for this. I did get the machine. That's it. Now, all they ask is if you would come visit them at carbide3d.com. I'll drop a link in the description below to their website. If you would kindly just go check them out, that would I would appreciate it and I know they would too. Now, I'm gonna do an experiment. That's what this is all about. I'm gonna do a video series. Every four to six weeks, I wanna put out one CNC type video to let you know how the business is going with CNC. What projects are selling, what projects are not selling. Start looking for projects on my website, 731woolworks.com slash store, as well as my Etsy store. You can just search 731 Woolworks. I'll link them both in the description below. Hey, be sure to click that box right there. It's gonna take you to more CNC videos when they're available. Also, if you click that box right there, it's gonna take you to a playlist on how to make money woodworking.